All right, so this model is a representation of the bronchial tree, but it also has a great representation, 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 I can talk, I swear, of the trachea and the larynx up above. So remember, we're trying to trace airflow through the respiratory system, through the conduction system that's going to lead down into the lungs. So as air passes down through the pharynx, nasopharynx, oropharynx, pharyngopharynx, it's going to end up, sorry, I said pharyngopharynx, that's funny, laryngopharynx, it's going to end up passing down into the larynx. And that's what you see at the, the, the most superior aspect of this model. There's that hyoid bone, there's the membrane, the thyro, hyro, uh, hy, hyoid membrane, there's the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and then we finally make it down into the trachea and the tracheocartilage themselves. So what I want to show you guys on this model is that this model actually separates out. And a lot of professors like to grade on a number of different aspects related to this model. You can see the thyroid gland over here, hence why, see how it starts on the thyroid cartilage, hence why it's called the thyroid. And if you look at it from the lateral aspect, you'll see that we can find the true vocal cords, the false vocal cords, the epiglottis, thyroid cartilage, cricoid on the posterior aspect, which is bigger than the cricoid on the anterior aspect. So I highly recommend being able to go through and still identify all those structures, even in this model. But the cricoid, just inferior to that, these blue are the cartilaginous rings. And the cartilaginous, cartilaginous rings are C-shaped. It's important to note that they are C-shaped. So when you look at this model from the posterior aspect, going nice and slow, you'll notice that there is actually a different anatomical structure back here. And part of this anatomical structure is connective tissue, but just deep to that is the trachealis muscle. So if you have these horizontal bands of muscle that contract, what's it going to be able to do? It's going to be able to reduce the diameter of the trachea. So it's going to help with airflow in and out of the lungs. So please take note of that trachealis muscle. Now I'm going to take and put this back so you're looking at the anterior aspect of this. The trachea with the tracheal ligaments connecting these different pieces of cartilage, they keeps on descending and descending and descending until it branches. And where it branches, it's going to become the bronchi. Ends in an I, it's plural. Bronchus is singular. Right at the very base of this is a highly sensitive area of the trachea, by the way, that is called the carina. The C-A-R-I-N-A. -A, the carina. The carina is where your cough reflex really comes from. As mucus drips down, it hits here. We don't want mucus down in the bronchi, so really strong cough reflex occurs here. Speaking of mucus, remember that this entire structure to this point is still all made up of ciliated, pseudostratified, epithelial, columnar epithelial tissue, right? I said epithelial twice, I apologize, but you get the point. It's producing mucus. That mucus is going to be, it's, it's, you don't want it down in your lungs, so that's why we have cilia. It's going to be walking all of that mucus back up all the way to the esophagus. It's called the mucosillary escalator, and it's going to end up moving all that mucus back up. So please keep taking note of the epithelial tissue that's found in these anatomical models. Now, right when the bronchus, bronchus, right when these two bronchi split, the first portion of the bronchi is called a primary bronchus, also known as a lobule bronchus. Now, these are going to um, be going to the left and right. Uh, I said lobule, I'm sorry. These are the right the right and left main bronchi, and they are going to be passing out to the main portions of the lung, right? So we're going to have the left lung and the right lung over here. The primary bronchus, or the main bronchus, is what's feeding those lungs with the air. Now, 
these bronchus, these bronchi, are going to branch. And when they branch, they become what's called the secondary bronchus. So a secondary bronchus here, secondary bronchus here, secondary bronchus here, here, and then down here as well. So these are the secondary branches, and they are going to the individual lobules of the lungs. So they're also known as the lobule, lobular bronchus, okay? Um, from there, these bronchi are going to branch again. So as they make it into the individual lobes of the lungs, which we'll go through that in another model, they are going to branch and they're going to start going out into the individual segments of the lungs. And so these, the tertiary bronchi, which are the colored portion on this model, the tertiary bronchi, they all go to the different segments of the different lobules. Okay, so they're also known as the segmental bronchi, segmental bronchi, and they continue to branch. They're going to have tw at least 12 different orders of branching as they go out throughout the lobules, and at the very end of the road, they're going to become bronchioles. As they get small enough, they lose the cartilage. You can see even here, even the colored portion is covered in cartilage, but as they continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller, they're going to start to lose that cartilage and they're going to start to gain these helical patterns of smooth muscle that surround those tubes. And that smooth muscle is going to allow us to control them much easier with our autonomic nervous system. That is not shown on this diagram. I'm just making sure to point that out. So as you pass down through the primary, secondary, tertiary, tertiary bronchi, it's still all cartilaginous tissue. Lots of cartilage that helps keep that tube from collapsing. And it is still ciliated, pseudostratified, columnar epithelial tissue through this whole portion here. All right, the next model that we're going to end up looking at is down inside of the lung itself. It's going to be looking at some alveoli sacs.